what's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, we're going to be covering a newer PlayStation 1 emulator known as Duck Station. Now, there's actually two versions of this. You can get the standalone version, but RetroArch also has a core, and both can be set up with LaunchBox, but this video is going to be focusing on the RetroArch core. I've tested out both of them. They both perform absolutely amazingly. There's a ton of settings built in, whether we're talking about the RetroArch version or the standalone version, but one of the main things that I'm personally personally interested in is the internal upscaling and it is available with the core. I personally like to keep all of my emulators consolidated and if I can run it with RetroArch with no issues, that's what I prefer to do. But if the interest is there, I can do a full standalone version tutorial also. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. If you don't already have RetroArch set up with LaunchBox, we have a full tutorial, link for that is in the description. But the first thing we need to do is go ahead and start RetroArch. We're gonna update our core list and download the new DuckStation core. So I'm in my LaunchBox directory, emulators. I'm gonna find RetroArch here, and we'll just launch the EXE. You can also do this from within LaunchBox. Now that I have RetroArch up and running, I'm going to head to Online Updater, scroll down to Update Core Info Files. I also like to update my databases, so we'll go to Update Databases. And now we need to go ahead and grab the core. From the Online Updater, we're going to go to Core Downloader, and we're going to find that DuckStation core. Sony PlayStation, DuckStation. Go ahead and download it. I already have the latest version. And this does require a BIOS to work properly. So the best way, in my opinion, to find out what BIOS we need is to go ahead and load the core. So from the main menu, we're going to go to Load Core. We'll find Duck Station that we just downloaded. We're going to load that up. Scroll to Information, Core Information, and we can check out what BIOSes we need. Now I've already got my BIOSes located in the correct directory. From the RetroArch folder, there's a folder called System and that's where your BIOSes are gonna go. As you can see, I have the SCPH5500 bin, the SCPH5501 bin, and the SCPH5502 bin. And I'll show you exactly where they need to go. We'll quit RetroArch, and from the RetroArch folder, we're gonna scroll down here until we see System, and you're just gonna place it right in here. Got a ton of BIOSes in here, but we'll find those SCPHs right here. So just place them in RetroArch System. So we've got our core downloaded, our BIOS is taken care of. Next thing we need to do is set the core up inside a launch box. So we're going to go back over to launch box. From the drop down here, we're going to choose Tools, Manage Emulators, find RetroArch. And it's only going to be here if it's set up already. We'll just double click, associated platforms, and from our associated platform list, we're going to find Sony PlayStation. Mine's located here, and I've been using the PC SX rearmed core. But we're going to go ahead and use the new DuckStation core, DuckStation underscore Libretro. That's the one we just downloaded inside a retro arch. Make sure it's chosen, default emulator. It can use M3U files, so I leave this checked also. We choose OK. Go ahead and close this down. Now it's time to import our games. And this is where DuckStation falls behind a little bit from the other emulators, because right now, this does not support PBP files. It supports bin files, IOSs, and CHDs. But at the time of making this video, PBP files are not supported by DuckStation, and hopefully that changes in the future. I think that's like the only thing they really need to add to this emulator to make it absolutely amazing. Another odd thing about the DuckStation emulator, be it the standalone version or the core for RetroArch, is it doesn't read off the Q file. Usually, with most of the PS1 emulators we have right now, when we import our games into LaunchBox, it can read that Q file and point it over to the bin file and we'll be fine like that. But in order to get these games to run with the DuckStation emulator, we have to import our bin files into LaunchBox. So I'm going to show you the setup I have now. On my desktop, I have a folder called Sony PlayStation. This is where my games are. They're bin and queue files. I've only got a few here just to make importing quicker for this tutorial. Now, like I mentioned, this reads off the bin file. So in order to import these correctly, we're going to go back to LaunchBox. From the drop down, Tools, Import, 
ROM files. I'm going to choose next here and I'm going to add files. So mine are located on my desktop, Sony PlayStation, and here we have it. If I was just to choose this whole thing, it would import these Q files and it wouldn't work correctly with the DuckStation emulator. So from the top here, we're going to search this folder for just bin, B-I-N. And now that's going to give me all the bin files that I have in this Sony PlayStation folder. I'm just going to select them all, or you can press Control A, choose Open, and I'm just going to look through it real quick, make sure these are all my bins, and this should be good to go. So we'll choose Next here. What platform are we importing games for? PlayStation. So we'll find Sony PlayStation. Choose Next. We're going to use the RetroArch emulator because we've already set up the DuckStation core. I want to copy these into my LaunchBox games folder because they're on my desktop. I'm going to have LaunchBox automatically put them in the correct location. Choose Next. I want to download as much artwork and metadata as possible, so I'll leave everything checked here. We don't need to specify any more custom options. And here it is. We have the name of the game, the location of the game, and the extension, which is .bin. Choose Finish. LaunchBox is now going to import those games, download our metadata and artwork for us. Just give it a little time to finish up. My games were successfully imported. I'll choose OK, and over in the left-hand column, we now have a PlayStation option. So we've got the games imported, emulator set up. Last thing that's left to do is start playing some games and messing around with the internal resolution and a couple other settings that are available for the DuckStation core. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Tekken 3. So I'm going to go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay here. Round one. And the way I have this set up right now is totally stock. I'm just going to pause the game itself. Now, I have my hotkeys set up inside of RetroArch to get into the menu by pressing L3 and R3. If you're on an Xbox controller, press the Xbox button. If you're just using a keyboard, press F1. That'll bring us back to the quick menu. From here, we can scroll down to options. These are the options that we can change from within the DuckStation core. There's a lot of stuff to mess around with, and I find that leaving most of this stuff stock works really well. We're at 1x resolution. This is the stock resolution of the PlayStation 1, but we can go way up with this, and it really depends on what your PC can handle. So I'm actually going to go up to 4K here. That's 9x resolution from the original resolution of the PlayStation 1. I can turn aliasing on. I'm going to go to 4x MSAA. This is just going to give me a better look to everything. True color rendering is something that you can mess around with if you want to. And if you just take a look through here, there's a lot of stuff that some people might want to mess around with. Texture filtering, I think, is set to nearest neighbor. I go to bilinear. You can turn on widescreen if you want to. This is a widescreen hack, but just note that some of the characters might look a little stretched out. Now, from here, that's about all I changed with this emulator. I've had really good performance. You can also change the aspect ratio. And if you scroll down further, there's just a lot of settings here. But like I mentioned, I just usually like to upscale it, turn on that bilinear filtering, and a little bit of aliasing. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do is just back up, resume the game, and there we are. So I am now upscaled to 4K, playing Tekken 3 here and I'm still running at 60 FPS, as you can see in the top right hand corner. Now most of the settings we just messed around with are kind of personal preference, but you can go through and just check out what you like, turn on different filtering options and things like that. But overall, I've had a really, really good experience with the DuckStation emulator. So yeah, I do recommend at least giving DuckStation a try. I really do wish it did support those PBB files because that's usually what I use with RPCS3. It just takes all of the discs, puts it into one. It's the same format that the PSP used to play PlayStation 1 games. But the way it sits right now, even with Ben and Q, I think DuckStation is definitely an awesome emulator and it's only going to get better over time. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in getting a tutorial on the fully standalone version of DuckStation, just let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.